When they move to L.A., they say that they have a hard time people accepting and recognizing them as Afro-Latinos. My question to you is, who is the most famous Afro-Latino you can think of? Afro-Latino. Um, God. I, I'm, God's, I, God is Afro-Latino. It was You heard it right here. <laughs> God is Afro-Latino, everybody. It's funny because I was going to mention, you asked him about Puerto Rico, and one of the reasons why it's hard for me to uh, um, identify myself only as a, a black person, for example, although my skin is lighter, is that in Puerto Rico we emphasize the culture. Uh, we, have, we are all mixed. We do not think that we're pure anything. And it's, yeah. it wasn't until I came here that I saw how segregated people mm -hmm. here are that I realized that my experience in Puerto Rico is atypical. Mm -hmm. I was, it was surprising for me because, for example, someone like Celia Cruz, which is very famous here. Celia Cruz. Celia Cruz. I, Celia Cruz. Celia I, Cruz. You know, she, the lady that was a top star in Cuba just before Celia, the lady that she replaced was a Puerto Rican singer, Mirta Silva, who was white. So Cuba, the most popular performer in Cuba before Celia, because Celia replaced her, La Sonora Matancera, was a white Puerto Rican woman who did salsa. And Celia started doing tango, by the Do way. Do you that think time. that because Latinos are mestizos, we're mixed to begin with, that we may be more open to uh, uh, intermingling and that whole mixture as opposed to the European American, which kind of, you know, is what dominated the United States here? Right. Do you think that the feeling between fair-skinned Latinos in Latin America is different than perhaps the fair skin uh, uh, American I mean, I here. I definitely yeah. think so. I mean, in in visiting my my family, my grandmother in Costa Rica, when I was growing up in the summer, we had the entire spectrum of colors, and we I never like thought a about it ad. exactly, yeah. right. you know, and I never thought about it. Only in coming here and going to school and um, dealing with certain groups, I was identified as X because my skin looked a particular way. So before I opened my mouth, people already judged me. They were like, oh, you're African-American. And I didn't have any problem with that because I was born here, but I also understood that part of my home or where I looked to was not actually in America, but it was to Costa Rica, it was to mm -hmm. Panama, it was to you know Jamaica, which is where my grandparents were from. Also, um, and this is kind of directed at Long John, but I'll be about music. I mean, Latin music has accepted African rhythms for centuries. It's, right. uh, the United States has been, uh, meaning the dominant European culture here has only let African music infuse as it's absur uh, you know, uh -huh. it becomes mainstream, w kind of what you would say would be white music. Right. Do you feel that, that that is true, that we have been more accepting, Latin has been more accepting of, of African culture in general? And those days, today, yes. But not before? Not before. Okay. Not before. I have Mario Bauza, who would be one of the most great Cuban musicians because he'd be black. Mm -hmm. He never making any fame in New York. Oh, really? He'd be somebody. You think his, his ethnicity yeah, kept him back? definitely. And, and right now you can see in the drums, there's a lot of white people who try and learn and how can they play the drum. Oh, really? You know, so when the geese come in from the accent that they talk over the phone, mm -hmm. they give it to the white. They give it away? And take it out of the Latino. Oh. But there's also discrimination in Latin America. It's well, yeah. Here. But you don't see over there like you're over here. Yes, it's more um, subtle. Because, you know, sometimes the people who in our culture right. tend to uh, tend to be more um, less tolerant of different races right. identify themselves as Spaniards. Yeah. But I think we seen of a uh, lack of education mm -hmm. because the original Spaniards, the first Iberians, right. were Africans. You know, the uh -huh. original Spaniards were mm -hmm. from Africa. Right. And they became lighter when the cells came down. Right. Also, you know, the biggest empire before Queen Isabella took over mm -hmm. were the African Moors. Mm -hmm. And it was the African Moors that gave them, like, a lot of the literature, the libraries, a, a lot of the civilization. Algebra. Algebra, philosophy. So a lot of what we identify with Spanish culture, it's really African culture in right. Spain. Mm -hmm. right. And if people knew that, also if the African Americans here knew how much of the African culture is in our culture, Latino, Hispanic, yeah. they would be more tolerant of all of that's, us. That's what, yeah. that's what I wanted to talk to uh, uh, Omar about this. What would you wish to, you're on TV right now, to communicate to people about the Afro-Latino that they should know about? I mean, what is an important thing for them to realize? Oh, well, great question. I, I think um, we just want to be, like, for instance, me, I'm going to talk from my views. I want people to know I'm Latino. That's, <laughs> That's all you got to know. I need people to know <laughs> I'm Latino. where I'm coming from, baby. Um, because I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. I'm 
definitely not comfortable with the blackness. No, I'm not. I, I'm well, we still learning about well, it. Well, it's just why should it's you limit yourself when Latino, it's a culture, it's yeah. not a race. I was yeah. talking, we were talking, for example, we have um, Japanese presidents, we have Arab presidents, like yeah. the president of Peru, it's, sure. you know, Asian. We have an Arab president in Argentina. Yeah. We even have a Jewish president in Cuba, no? Sure. Yeah. So we have oh all my kinds, God. which is harder here. I mean, when will they have a black president, mm -hmm. or an Arab president, or oh, an why? Asian president, why or a woman not? president, yeah. or a Jewish president? Why not? Right. Latin America has proved politically that it, it is more We're a lot more diverse. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's tough, you know, um, just learning a ho about the whole entire black culture. I mean, I've, I wasn't educated in black culture when I live in Latin America. We, we studied Francisco Pizarro, Acuña de Balboa, wow. Simón Bolívar, you know. Right. So then you come up here and, you know, you're learning about Martin Luther King. And Mark, Ma I thought Michael Mess was a musician. I didn't even know that <laughs> was. I had to see the movie. I saw the movie. My, 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 my culture is different. You, in Cuba, the, yeah. you learn about... About the black. Yeah, see, not in about Panama, we, we didn't. You see, so... I'm glad and happy to be a Latino, mm -hmm. but I'm part of the black. Claro, yeah. because you cannot so, take the black no, out no, of Latino. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's <laughs> not because that. This is what you get, you know. And it's not because that. I can let him take his son a little bit, and I can go lie, lie, lie. <laughs> <laughs> Your brother, no matter where you go. I, I also think what's important is the whole idea of being Latino is the idea that we're, we're all these different things put together, and there shouldn't be any contradictions with understanding that I'm woman, I'm Caribbean, I'm Latina, I live in, in America, I've lived in Africa. All those things exist, but what happens is here, the racial constructs are so boxed in mm -hmm. that you are one thing and you can't be anything yeah, else. Exactly. And that's what Latinos in the United States are resisting, to being boxed into being either from Spain or from Africa, or indigenous. I we a, are not. I have a theory about that. You know, because the United <laughs> States is a capitalistic society, they want to sell something. Mm. That's how we all live. Yeah. If they can't be exactly sure what you are, you're scary. That's mm. why Latinos are scary. Or you're exotic. Right, uh, or you're exotic. <laughs> right, or you're Lena Horn. you know? Uh, you're, you're not exactly one thing, so how do we sell to them? That's the problem with the Latino market. They want to know, what one thing can we do? And you tell them, we're multi-generational, we're multi-racial, some of us have been here for 20 minutes. Some of us have been here for 20 generations. So it takes. So, but you know, it also, if it's the economy that's leading this, you know, discovery of Latinos, then they should learn from us that we don't divide our culture by race. That's right. it. They, exactly. That's if they want to make money with me, then call me a Latino, like Omar says. Don't yeah. try to segregate me and call me black or call me white or call me whatever. I want him for president. He <laughs> wants me for. We will talk. We will talk. Oh, really? right Luis, that's, uh, announce your candidacy right here, Luis. Right the Afro Latino Party. So, Bart Luis, oh, Vega, Vega, Vega. You know, and really? also, you know, this is there has not been a better time to be to have an African influence because you know the the, the chairman of the United Nations, Kofi Annan, it's African, the first time ever, and also Miss Universe. They have the first Miss Universe. Boy, mm -hmm. would she be? So you know, and it shows that we need to educate not only the Latinos and not only the whites, but we need to educate the blacks themselves so that they know that not all the Africans that came to America were slaves. You know, yeah. the exactly. captain, the captain of the Santa Maria with Christopher Columbus was black. The first blacks in New York that came in 1926, no, 19, no, 1826, the first ones, basically, they were free slaves. They were not slaves. They were free blacks. Mm. So if you only view your culture as slave, poor, uneducated, who wants to be poor and uneducated? Right. But if you really teach people their history, then we can all feel proud that we have a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, which I, I, and talking to Luis about with this topic, and uh, Luis comes by, by, he studies language. It's amazing how much you learn. You told me that Emiliano Zapata's father is black? No, was he's not the father. He's the grandfather. As a matter of fact, I was very fortunate to be hired for a project by the California African American Museum. I work with Natasha. And they had an exhibition of two very famous artists, but you pronounce it better. Elizabeth Catlett. Elizabeth Catlett and, and Francisco yeah. Mores, her husband. They're kind of like the Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo of our culture. Okay. While um, they, you Hopefully know, she, they didn't live in as much pain. No, no, no. no. <laughs> they, 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 they're very happy. They're still alive. And they have a lot of, they have a few kids. No, yes, where, three sons. Exactly. Yeah. Very talented. And I learned working for the museum on this project um, how much interaction, positive interaction, are between the two races. She relocated to Mexico. She speaks Spanish. She's African-American. He is Mexican. Mexican. And in the process of 
working with them, I learned that Emiliano Zapata was black. That's amazing. But they have taken the black out of Mexican history. Right, we'll be back yeah. with more Cafe California. And I want to oh, let you know right. this is one of the first times we have where everyone speaks fluent Spanish. Ah, fluent you know. Spanish. Oh, my Spanish is right. Well. Well.